Mr. City Attorney, please present the next item on the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is comments by the general public. Right. First up, Tara Stout. I'm here tonight to speak to Mayor Buckley and emphasize how desperately the Willows and the Legion need your help. We understand that you are very busy and it must be challenging juggling all the priorities. Should I wait until you're finished? You should. You should. Uh, excuse me, but I'm here to speak with you and so I'll wait until you're available to listen to start my three minutes. Council meeting. I followed up with an email on the 14th, left a voicemail for your chief of staff, sent you a text, resent the email on 320, and copied in the entire council. Earlier today, Ronnie Mitra, in house counsel for the Willows, followed up reiterating that we were still awaiting a response and also informing the city that the Willows, Legion, and Providence Point have entered into a three way Thank agreement you. regarding That's Skipper's three Lane minutes. rights of way. Three well, minutes. my three minutes were delayed by your Chair, Mr. City Attorney, I appeal the ruling of the chair. Okay, uh, Alderman Gay, you're wasted. No, I'm not. You are. No, and it's inappropriate for you to say that. You know you are. It is incredibly inappropriate for you to say that. It's true. It is incredibly inappropriate for you to say that. Um, we can talk about appropriate after the council. No, it's meeting. incredibly inf inappropriate for well, you to say true. that. It is true. Thank you, and it's happened before. Okay. Uh, my last statement is, no, no, no. your uh, chief point of, of order, staff point of and order, Mr. Smith point of order, point of order, point of order, I'm Mr. City I'm not recognizing you, Alderman Gay. Point I'm of order, Mr. City. You. Point of order. No, I'm not recognizing you. Point of order, Mr. City Attorney. I'm not recognizing you. Point of order. Alderman Gay, I'm not recognizing you. Point of order. There's, there's no point of order you've if I don't just, recognize you. No, no, you have just directly broken the city code. No. You, no. He is Please finish. Okay. No. Uh, Mr. Mitra informed attorney. everyone that the city, that the Willows, the Legion, and Providence Point have entered into a three way agreement regarding the Skipper's Lane rights of way. Your Chief of Staff and Mr. Smith both questioned me about the status of that agreement after my comments at the last meeting. So you've now been provided a copy. No. So if that's the real reason we've been stalled, that issue can be put to bed. You wrote a great letter of support that enabled the Willows to apply for low income housing tax credits. We need you to respond or direct the appropriate parties to respond with what the city's timeline is for the Willows. Hopefully that will be an April meeting at Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney, point of order. Yes. I would ask that you address the accusation made by the mayor on the floor. Uh, the mayor I believe it is in direct violation of the city code. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, the rules of Robert Orders. Please do so indefinitely. Do the, so immediately. The mayor is the presiding officer, so he controls the meeting. Thank you. And Mr. Well, point of order, Mr. Point, point, point of order, point of order, point of order. I ask that you just please take back the statements that you made on the on the council floor. I will floor. take it back to get on with the meetings. I apologize. So let's get on. With it the was incredible. No, not all, it was incredibly in a, it, no. It was incredibly disrespectful, and I would never undermine you in your seat in such a way, regardless of you, regardless of what knowledge I may have had pr previous to a city you council already meeting. Have I would have never, I would have never, so you're going to bring up now accusations in the public? The really, Gavin? Yeah, yes. You already are accusing some... Mr. City Attorney, I ask that we break for a five-minute recess. I believe that the city, that the uh, presiding officer is breaching uh, and pushing very slanderous territory right now with the, another member of the council. Uh, I'm not going Mr. City Attorney, I ask that you address this in a manner Mr. necessary. Mr. City Attorney does not run the meeting. I am running the meeting, Alderman Gay. And you're going to use your pulpit yes, to I undermine am. another member of the staff? I am definitely going to, yes. And you're going to use your pulpit yes, to I undermine am. another member of the I staff? I am definitely going to, yes. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney, please present the next, oh, sorry. Next speaker, Curtis. Point of information, I like the record to note that I believe we're un operating under insufficient rules of rabbit order under the direction of the City Attorney, Michael Lowes, and the Mayor, Gavin Buckley. Thank you. Curtis, you need to come forward? Thank Thanks, you. Chief. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next item on the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is legislative actions on second reader, beginning with Ordinance 04020, Workforce Housing. Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? Point of order. Point of information would be your call. Can I, can I just say something? We were told Point of Gina. Uh. <laughs> okay, um, we were um, told that 04022 was to be per referred back to the Housing Committee. That was the request, madam. Okay, just so I don't know what, what we're doing with Mr. it. Mr. City Attorney, where, where does that stand? Not sure what, what, what I'm being asked. So they were told that it was supposed to go back to the Health Welfare Committee, but I think that we've just well, voted it down here. There has to be a motion to do something. Right now, it's motion to. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to postpone it until our April the 17th meeting of the Housing Human Welfare Committee meeting. Yeah. Can you. You need a second? Get a second, please. Second. I'm going to do a. Uh, well, actually. All those in favor say aye of the postponement. Aye. Aye. All those against say no. 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 Mr. Mayor, could we do a discussion on the topic? It's been voted down now, so. Awesome. No problem. Thank yeah. you so much. I, uh, I appreciate your assistance as the chair. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney, please present the next on the agenda. The next I made a motion to. Uh, by the way, I appreciate this tag team. This is phenomenal tonight. Mike Lowes and Gavin Buckley. Uh, I had made a motion previously to uh, withdraw 05022, and I put that motion on the floor tonight. You got to read it into. I was just saying, got the attorney got to read it into the record first. We didn't. So you make a motion. Well, first of all, you got to get it. back to the agenda. So okay. First, yes. <laughs> The next item on the agenda is Ordinance 05022. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. As the sponsor of the amendment, I appreciate the floor. Yes. Thank you. I make a motion to uh, withdraw 05022. I uh, previously made this uh, recommendation in the Housing and Welfare meeting. Uh, we've discussed it, we've agreed, and I would appreciate the consensus of this council and body tonight. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, Alderman Annette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, uh, I want to get a clarification because I heard at the Housing and Human Welfare that if it's withdrawn, it can't be reintroduced. I don't know whether it's this year or this term, and I want to make sure, uh, I do think we need rent control legislation, so I want to make sure if we're withdrawing it that there isn't going to be some period of time before we can introduce new legislation. Mr. Mayor, if I could comment on that before the, the uh, chair or before the off, uh, city of law or the city manager makes their comment. We've been told so many things by the office of law throughout our propositions for legislation on both 04022 and 05022. I'm not sure, Alderman from the 8th Ward, what is true? Uh, if the legislation cannot be reintroduced as is, or if it cannot re be reintroduced under the guise of separate legislation. Um, I think that is one of the things we'd request from the Office of Law as we move forward uh, on legislation. Mr. City Attorney. Uh, 04022 wasn't drafted by the Office of Law. So we, we have made no comments about it. We didn't draft it. We, didn't, we don't, all we do is write what people tell us to write. We didn't have any legal review of it because we didn't draft it. Mr. Uh, Mr. City uh, Mayor, we did submit uh, the first version of 04022 to the to the Office of Law. I worked in tandem uh, with the uh, planning and uh, or the planning department. We submitted the first version of 04022 uh, to the Office of Law. The Office of Law. I'm not sure under whose direction, then turned around and submitted a separate version of that under a separate title of the code. Uh, the planning and zoning department was caught off guard and shocked because we submitted a proposal to the Office of Law uh, to be submitted to the, uh, the full floor of the city council. It was not under that process. 
We got separate legislation. I've talked to the Office of Law, the uh, uh, policy analysis, as well as the planning and zoning uh, director at the time and the planning staff assisting on the legislation. There clearly was some confusion, but I have three versions of the legislation here. So I want to be sure to the general public that 04222 was submitted to the Office of Law and had been submitted to the Office of Law through its original inception. Mr. City Attorney. Uh, 04022 was submitted to the Office of Law. We made revisions, corrections for legal sufficiency. Those corrections and revisions were refuted and repudiated by others in staff and on the council. And we then retracted our legal sufficiency review and our draft and decided to let the parties who were originally involved in 04022 continue the path of legislation without our involvement. Thank you so much. Point of information, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me, point of order. I had a question on the floor, which on was relevant. The still has the floor. So. Well, uh, my question was with regard to- I, I was under the impression that when you call for a point of information, the floor was yours. I, I, you're on the floor. Let, let, let's hear from you, Alderman Gay. What, what, Thank what you, you so to... much, Mr. Mayor. I, I appreciate your time. Uh, just in closing this out quickly, because 04022 is not even on the floor. <laughs> but we had several discussions starting in November with this legislation. The problem was is that we didn't even have an assistant city attorney present at our meetings to guide us correctly on the amendments until I requested one. Now, granted. That request is supposed to be made. However, I think in any committee meeting, and particularly when you're dealing with important legislation, an assistant city attorney should be present. I did request one at the previous meetings to, re uh, to rele relegate the amendment issues that we had. I think those were fixed, and that was my point of having the, or the legislation sent to this body and then being sent to my committee. It was not done that way. I hold no malice to anyone on the floor. I want to come back with uh, new legislation, and, and I appreciate the time to discuss that, even though it's uh, an inappropriate point of information because we're not even on 04022 from the city attorney. He discussed this, not me. You, you brought it up, Alderman Gay. Yeah. So uh, Alderman Annette. we had a motion to withdraw 05022. It was properly seconded. My question, and I want to make sure for myself, but more importantly because I do support rent control legislation, what will be the status of future landlord-tenant relations? Can we introduce new legislation immediately, within two months, whatever? Can we introduce new legislation that deals with landlord-tenant relationships? I think we very much need this kind of legislation. Um, and it's not just for the rent rates, it's also for the maintenance of the properties for the health and well-being of the tenants. So I want to make sure that if we pass this withdrawal, we are not precluding us coming back with new legislation to deal with landlord-tenant relations. I'm assuming you can <coughs> introduce legislation whenever you like on my net, but we'll get the city attorney <laughs> to confirm. Not the same legislation, but Mr. I city know, attorney. but that's that was brought up at the Housing and Human Welfare meeting that if it was withdrawn that we couldn't introduce for a year or for the term any new legislation having to do with landlord tenant and, and that was told to us i support the alderman from ward eight that was told to us in our housing and human welfare committee meeting and so we are not clear because they say you know i'm going to get some clarity for you now please okay. um mr city attorney the particular bill could not be brought back but there's a wide array of things that you could do in landlord and tenant um the landlord and tenant topic that is not the same as this bill. This bill, as I understand it uh, and read it, involves developing guidelines through a rent stabilization board who would prevent, present those guidelines to the council for passage um, and set some increased notice requirements. But there are a wide array of things that could be brought up that may not be directly on point. But when the code suggests right. that things can't be brought up in the term, they're talking about the bill, not the topic generally. Thank you. I can, with your permission, Mayor, can I ask the sponsor a question? Yes. 
I understand, Alderman Gay, that you've been working on significant rewrite of the ideas that were in this legislation, and in your opinion, are they significantly different than this bill? So we won't run into any problems if we want to introduce a new bill? I do believe so, uh, Mr. Alderman, uh, and I intend to make them as such so that we do not run into any problems with the uh, legislation moving forward. I've seek the counsel uh, of members from the Montgomery County Council, um, as well as other jurisdictions that have passed this legislation to ensure uh, that we do have the correct direction. All right, thank you. Th then I feel more comfortable about voting for the withdrawal. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, Point of Mr. information, Mr. Mayor. Slight yes. correction. Uh, Alderman Gay. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. At the R1, I'm sorry, at our Housing and Human Welfare Committee meeting, we request it has not reached a 90 day rule in committee. We requested that it actually be postponed to our April the 17th meeting. I followed up with an email to the staff of that, uh, of the committee that was proceeding over it. I'm not sure how it made its way onto, uh, onto the agenda. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, if it's reached the uh, committee deadline of 90 days. That, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. It was a typographical error on our part. Uh, okay, right? awesome. It's a typographical error on our Thank part. You so much. It should not have been on the agenda. I appreciate so, that. Um, so from a technical standpoint, my suggestion is that um, we, we remove it from the agenda because it was a typographical error on our part. And so it ended up on the agenda in error. I, so if I you, understand. I, Mr. Mayor, if I could But, but the council can yeah. still deal yeah. with it at once, too. Yeah. If Thank I could you, explain to the sponsor, okay. no malice intent at all. We had several amendments that night that you were not privy to the explanation of. I wanted to give you the opportunity to see them beforehand. No malice intent at all. Yeah. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? All those in favor say Mr. Mayor, if I could, uh, discussion on the on the floor, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Again, I'm not sure if this is some slick move or what. We requested that this be postponed until April the 17th in committee explicitly. We voted on the amendments recommended by the Chief of Planning, um, or Chief of Comprehensive Planning, <laughs> accepted the amendments and voted on them to be postponed until our April the 17th amendment for further discussion by the body and the sponsor. I'm not sure how this ended up on the agenda. It was completely an error. And so the fact that we are taking an error as an, a chance to hijack uh, and make a political move is, is dangerous, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Thank you so much for your consideration. Still on the poll, uh, I'd like to move the Savage Amendment 3. Mr. Mayor, there's a motion on the floor that's been seconded and there's debate. He can't move an amendment when we haven't even voted on the motion on the floor. So there's a motion on the floor. We're going to vote on this now? No, because the motion was to adopt on second reader. But you didn't get a, you didn't get a vote on the motion to adopt your R123 on the floor. I did. No, no, you, I was did. it? I okay, you're right, you're right, because I did, yeah, we did break for discussion. I haven't recognized you, Alderman Gay, please. Right. So we have a motion and a second on uh, uh, 123. Uh, okay. All, all those. Point of order. order. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Point of information, Madam City Clerk. How is this on the agenda when, I, when we've asked in committees that it not be made to the agenda. You were at present at the meeting. The uh, policy analysis was present at the meeting, and so was the city council clerk. I'm confused. Um, Alder McGay, let me just say that um, it was a human error, and we do apologize for it being on the agenda. There was no in no intent to. So the human it. error is going to allow for this resolution, which has a significant let me let me just say further that um when you did contact us we did put it on the um agenda to be referred back to your committee but that didn't happen when the agenda was adopted at the beginning so i do apologize again for the mistake <laughs> thank you so much i 
I have no <laughs> malice towards the office of the city clerk. I find it uh, <laughs> extremely convenient uh, that this amendment was requested in committee not to be sent to the council floor barring the amendments that we had discussed. You need and to all keep, of a sudden, keep it's at, your voice down. On all of a sudden, it's at the city council floor and it's got the vote. Mighty convenient. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Okay, all those in favor? It's a crazy stat. No, no, no. Because uh, is it an amendment? It, it was, okay, the um, Alderman Savage moved the resolution yep. on second reader and it got a second. So now it's time for amendments and he did offer an amendment, but he didn't get a second. I said to, he said. Okay, thank you. It Do you wanna speak to that amendment? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, that's basically it for that amendment. Thank you, Alderman Gay had his hand up next, and then Alderman Chandelmeyer. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Everything is germane to the amendment on the floor. Again, in the reading that we have it, uh, I have significant concerns regarding uh, the staff that put together this amendment and allowed it to be on the agenda tonight. I'm concerned because it's not the first coincidence. The first was 04022 and what I described and the chaos there you know, with the planning staff and then the Office of Law staff, et cetera. I forget that because I'm prepared to work with my colleagues on 04022 as I committed to several of my colleagues at the lunch today. Then we get R123, which is in direct defiance to 04022 and it's mistakenly put on the agenda so they can mistakenly vote on it tonight. I don't know how that happens, Mr. Mayor, and I would appreciate it if moving forward, as I requested previously, at every single subcommittee meeting of the council, a, a assistant city attorney should be present. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because if something happens, you watching on Zoom can't correct us so that we can address it in the moment and make sure that things are, so that, make, so that we can make sure that business is done appropriately. I'm not trying to come off hostile at all in any way, shape, or form, Mr. Mayor, but I'm just disappointed in the fact that this made it on the agenda accidentally when 04022 was screwed up from the beginning in the Office of Law. And then this is just like, none of that makes any sense. We've had the planning staff here on a number of occasions, and they've said that R123 goes directly against what is proposed in the comprehensive plan. Not only to mention it goes in direct defiance of the Fair Housing Act and its specific and blatant target of affordable housing or housing affordability. I just, I don't understand how the council or a majority of the body could support this. More importantly, I don't understand how this was accidentally put on the agenda. We don't make mistakes. There have been several occasions where people have, where the uh, city clerk or uh, the city clerk staff has sent agendas to the council. Before they were published, we've said, hey, this should not be present, or this should not be on here, or hey, this should be removed. They removed it without question. Now, all of a sudden, this mistakenly makes it on the agenda when we asked that it be postponed to the 17th. I don't know how that would happen. I asked the city manager also take a look into. Uh, the staffing and procedural process of legislation as it relates to uh, the body and our process uh, to the Office of Law. I think at minimum, the city attorney's office, and this is no, Gav, even despite what happened earlier, I love you. Like seriously, you've been, a, you've been a really good mayor and a good friend, but at minimum, the city attorney's office should report to the city manager. There's some funny business going on, and particularly with 04022 and R123 being accidentally put on. It's and, directly, and, uh, that's uh, the only reason that this was on the agenda. Uh, uh, Alderman Gay, the, the city attorney had, had admitted that it was a mistake making. The city attorney had suggested that we postpone it, but it was brought to the floor by the council. But I, I, I emailed them even before this got, got out to the public. And there have been so many situations in the past where my colleagues have emailed or said, I can even point to my colleague from, our, from Ward 8, has been disappointed about something on the agenda and we've pulled it or we've removed it prior to it being published to the public. 
And so I'm not understanding why in this instance where there was a legitimate error and I requested that it be removed prior to the meeting, they could not remove it and then they allowed it to go forward. I, I, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I don't want to destroy any more time. I'm going to repeat. Alderman Shanemeyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Savage, in regards to the whereas clause that was added in on action since the 2009 comprehensive plan and actions towards housing affordability, what was the average cost of a home in 2009 in Annapolis, the city of Annapolis? Do you know? <laughs> it was according to the BAE study on urban economics that was done for a comprehensive plan, approximately $350,000 was the median home price. What's the median home price in the city of Annapolis right now? I think you should be addressing me and I don't know. <laughs> this is to the room. Any, yeah. anyone? It's, it's not a cross-examination. It's $625,000. Again, according to the BAE study, on the market analysis of the comprehensive plan. I appreciate we tried certain things, tightening the, tightening the uh, MPDU rule was a good thing. Accessory dwelling units were a small step. I never once said that that would solve the housing crisis, but it was a small but necessary step to be taken. But we can see just through numbers from our own people we have failed in addressing any kind of meaningful, sustainable housing affordability since the 2009 Comprehensive Plan. We have done some things that have made a significant difference for small groups of people, yes, and that should be commended. But as a structural process, this whereas clause is frankly not matching the numbers. I also have a lot of issue with we can't solve the housing crisis alone and we need to take into consideration what Anne Arundel County is doing. That sends a message whether we intend it to or not. We do not care about the housing crisis in the city and we are going to pass all responsibility to the county for this issue. And passing responsibility to this to a legislative body that contains Nate Volke is reckless. And you combine that with some of the things that people have said to each other in private, it really kind of goes into the core of why there is a lot of mistrust on R123. Because we've seen the things you've said. Two of the co-sponsors have been called uninvested due to their support of housing affordability and due to homeowner status by a, by a co-sponsor of this. It doesn't match the numbers. It sends a really bad message. And then finally, there's the fundamental issue that the chief of comprehensive planning, and I, I appreciate this incorporates some of his things. The chief of comprehensive planning has had a lot of issues on a resolution that is designed to handle comprehensive plans, the comprehensive plan. I have a lot of issues with R1, but if we implement the Lashinsky, uh, if we implement Amendment 1, I will at least just vote no and pout and not go, this is actively trying to subvert any attempt at fair housing in the city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All ready for a vote. Um, I will be voting no just to do, because this process is, um, I'm, I'm not happy with it. Um, on, are we voting on the amendment? We're voting on the amendment. So, uh, yeah. Amendment three. Savage. Savage amendment. Okay. Any other comments? I, I just want to be clear <clears throat> because I'm, I, I'm, I've kind of gotten a bit confused. We're not on amendment one. We're not on amendment two. We're on amendment three. Is that correct? That's what we're voting on? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. 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 Thank you. The ayes have it. Uh, can I get a motion? Thank you. 
Move R1. Move R120, I'm sorry, R123 as, as amended, amended on the second reader. Second. Thank you. Second. Thank you so much. Is it something new, Alderman Gay? <laughs> Mr. Mayor's discussion on the amendment that's yes. on the, I mean, sorry, on the motion that's on the floor. Um, I once again want to echo the fact that the Chief of Comprehensive Planning has denounced this legislation and his proposed amendments. I want, I want to once again echo that we had requested that, that this amendment be postponed until April the 17th. I have no idea how it ended up on the agenda tonight, even though we requested that it be removed prior to the agenda being uh, published to the public. So that means that they had ample opportunity to remove it before they uh, published it to the public. Instead, they chose to do so in direct defiance of the Housing and Human Welfare Committee and our request and our vote. I'm not sure how any of that took place. Oh, oh my uh, God, you've studied this three times. You're right, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, but I'm taking the opportunity as a member of the council to discuss my displeasure. So thank you very much for allowing me that. But again, the staff should not have put this legislation on the agenda. Thank you, Alderman Shandemeyer. This is a strict point of order question. Yep. Um, I know we jumped onto Amendment 3. Are we not going to put our votes on the record for Amendment 1 and Amendment 2? I think they're on the record. Yeah. We moved right that, to that, Amendment 3. I think no, they, no. Haven't, they haven't been moved. They yeah. haven't been moved. They don't have the votes to be moved. No, but I think it's important that we put people on the record of the Chief of Comprehensive Planning's recommended proposals. and other proposals as well. You have an opportunity to move those. I'd like to move amendment one, please. No. Point, of, point yeah. of order. I thought we were on right of order. Alderman Savage. Sorry. The motion is as amended, so it can't be amended again unless that vote's okay. overturned. Very well. Regina. He is correct. That's correct. Thank you. Alderman Shanamai. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Quick question to any of the co-sponsors, and I know this may not be traditional rules, but I do think it's important to get a sense of understanding what Annapolis's housing market is today. Not 10 years ago, not 20 years ago or more, today. Does anyone here have a sense of how many apartments, period, are for rent? It's not a cross-examination forum, please, Alderman Chandemeyer. You can't directly define Very well. In the city of Annapolis, according to apartments.com, that you can move into on April 1st, and this is the entire city regardless of price, there are currently 68 rental units available in the city. Only 25 of them are $2,000 or less, the average rent according to the BAE study on the Annapolis housing market. Zero are $1,500 or less. According to Zillow, there are only 48 total rentals in the city. Currently. 14 Apartments. of them okay. are 2000 or less. And only one is $1,500 or less. The for sale market is also pretty dire. There are only 47 units for sale in the city, according to Zillow. Only 13 of those are for sale for $500,000 or less. And only nine of those are for sale for $335,000 or less, which is what I paid for my home, which has gone up in value by over 20,000. Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm still going. Uh, I, I just want to make one caveat based on my situation. You're talking about apartments, is that correct? Total rental units available. That is not true. I accept criticisms and suggestions to my methodology, oh, but floor, oh, I'm sorry. That was total Alderman rental units. And, um, if I may, I will accept total. Um, while the websites that I used of apartments.com and Zillow, uh, I am open to criticisms and suggestions in my methodology. But those are the two biggest public listed real estate websites that are being used to find places to live. And it is a very good starting point on which to judge. My point is we seem to have a lack of concern for how bad the market is right now. It is apocalyptic. We are hemorrhaging young families due to the high cost of housing. 
And this may be seen like, oh, well, who cares about that? We want older established people. This is also bad news for them. If someone's situation changes, if they're currently an owner, such as an illness, a death in the family, a job change, an addition to the family, that can radically change your housing situation and block the flexibility to be able to stay in the city where you live and call home. This resolution cannot be unseparated from the workforce housing bill. And it is really combined with our other practices of land use and housing policy and comments made during the comprehensive plan study shows that we are not taking this seriously. To anybody who is struggling to stay in their home because they lost a spouse or got divorced, we're saying we don't take this seriously. For someone who has just been evicted, whether a kid with leukemia, and has nowhere to go in the city that they call home, this isn't a make-believe, this is something that happened in the Admiral Farragut Apartments to someone on Thursday of last week. We're saying we don't take that seriously. Folks, we keep putting forward these values of we want to be a welcoming city, of a one Annapolis city, if we care about addressing this and that for discrimination and housing affordability. But every time it comes up, we come up short five to four. And that speaks louder than resolutions. So we know how this is going to play out. We do. This is me raging against the dark. I get it. But I just want it said. 10, 20, 30 years ago from now, when people are looking back on this and they go, what happened when the city of Annapolis was so out of compliance with the fair housing rule? I didn't know that since 2015. Why did it decide to double down on discrimination? Because we want to comfort the comfortable more than anything else. Thank you. Alderman Pindell, Charles, can we just vote? <laughs> I just have one thing to say. I just want to clarify based on personal, truly personal knowledge that must be just for apartments. I'll speak to you after the meeting. 